The White Center community came together Saturday, April 5th to honor one of their fallen heroes by dedicating Steve Cox Memorial Park, named for the King County Sheriff's deputy who was killed in the line of duty a little more than a year ago. The celebration included a grand opening to the park's newly renovated Mel Olson Stadium. Sheriff's deputies, community leaders, and family members gathered to dedicate the park. Present arms going to be like this. When we march on, uh, Sheriff's going to lead it. She's going to go down to home plate. When you get to home plate, she's going to face inbound on the field. Just stay there. Tom Hunter is the uh, uh, MC. He'll tell the audience, go ahead and please everybody rise and face out to the field. Just do a half a turn, look out there, and then you're just going to stay there for like 20 minutes while they do all the ceremony. When the uh, color guard marches on, the White Center Community Development Association, the Seattle Prep Baseball Program, Puget Sound Senior Baseball League, and King County Parks partnered with the local businesses, baseball leagues, and community members to renovate and improve the stadium's field and stands. Improvements include a new synthetic turf infield, new bullpens, batting cages, and more. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. By way of introduction, my name is Tom Hutler. I'm the public address announcer for the Mariners at Safeco Field, which we often refer to as the most beautiful ballpark of baseball, but I think that has to take a back seat today to this new facility here. We want to thank you all for coming out and uh, joining us to celebrate this special day at what is from here to four known as Steve Cox Memorial Park. As many of you know, Steve grew up in this area and played in this park. As he watches over us, I know he would be smiling down. Someday he will see his son Bronson playing in a park that bears his name. He will also smile down to see the tremendous progress that's been made in this neighborhood that he so deeply loved. We've all watched as White Center has blossomed in a, into a community that is safer and more beautiful with each passing year. As the former president of the Highline Unincorporated Incorporated Area Council, he worked hand in hand with many of you who are here today because he shared your vision of what White Center could become. He also served as a leader and a role model with his fellow deputies in the Sheriff's Office. I am so proud of the work they have all done to honor his memory. As we look at the amazing transformation of this baseball stadium, it stands as a symbol to what people who care about the future of their community and their children can accomplish. I thought down you, young man. You better step up a couple of steps. In the heat. We got a half for it, too. Steve Cox's two-and-a-half-year-old son, Bronson, and wife, Maria, were there to throw out the first pitch. Come on, boo! While making the park renovation a reality was the product of many people's efforts, the idea began with area residents Joe Mentor, Dale Bethel, and Greg Drobnik. Well, Joe, tell me about the uh, beginnings of this and how you came to, uh, to make this project a reality. Well, um, I don't know where it really began. I guess it began sitting in the stands with these two guys and some other parents. Um, watching our kids play on a, on this field, it was pretty run down, and we finally got to where we just couldn't take it anymore, and decided to do something about it. We came out here in October right. of 2006, Joe and I, on a Sunday afternoon with a transit and and, and, and uh, measurements, and stood at home plate, and left field was three feet lower than home plate, and center field was four and a half feet lower than home plate and this whole half side was underwater and under mud wow. and uh, I said this, this ain't acceptable so we just decided so the astro turf is obviously a brand new it's, yeah it's called field turf it, yeah um, the the renovation included putting drainage under the infield and then placing this artificial surface called field turf 
over the top of it, and then we regraded the outfield and, and replanted it. And then there's a lot of work that's gone on around the outside. Dale's company painted the whole stadium. It's painted Safeco Green is the color. The Mariners gave us the outfield wall pad from Safeco Field, which we use for the backstop. Um, we had all of those companies, uh, Skanska, um, <coughs> Glacier Northwest gave us concrete and gravel. We just had an incredible outpouring of support from Mid from Mountain those came out and poured all the curbing that went all the way around here, all of the bullpens, all of the concrete work they supplied. So it was uh, quite a labor of love by a lot of people. In just like 20 seconds, this is from spare tires, the, the stuff, the, the <laughs> recycled, right. recycled. Pick up a little and show them. This is ground up tires, recycled, and there's sand and, and this rubber mix. They uh, lay a layer of in, sand and then in rubber the, in the carpet. And sand and then rubber. There's six layers in there to wow. take it and stand up. And it's obviously so kids don't injure, injure their knees. And... Well, it's, yeah, they're, I mean, first of all, it drains. Oh. So uh, we can play in here with, you know, a lot more often than we could before. It doesn't look, rain out nearly as often as it did. And then also for safety, it feels like the ground. Fortunately, it just plays like that yeah. too. I think it's the, the lack of fields, and, and we had a field here that we need to upgrade, and perhaps use it for a lot of years. And, and uh, we, we, even though all of our kids are seniors, it was something that we're able to do for the for the next generations of prep kids and, and a community uh, kind of uh, gym, as they say. And now we're we are we are uh, asking the county to take. To look at what's yeah. been done here, and we want to renovate all those fields out there. And so, as a group, we've applied for a $1.6 million grant to redo the ball fields out here for the younger kids. For the, you say out here? Out, if you take a look behind here, there's yeah. two ball fields. Yeah. They're for the six to ten year olds, and then the corner lot is the ten to fourteen year olds. And return return that and give them back something, and have a field just like this for them. Seattle, how does it feel to be opening season or opening day? Just or? incredible. I've been the coach of prep for 23 years. Uh, this has been our field for 17 years, and it needed a lot of work, but had a lot of potentialities. I've always said that beautiful grandstands, parking, it just took a little elbow grease and a buck or two to get it here, and you see what the effort did. It's just an incredible job by the volunteers and the in-kind people. It has, I mean, to me, it feels like a professional, but uh, there's a certain energy to it. Well, I'm biased. That? I have never seen in all my 23 years as a head coach a better high school baseball facility by far. I just came back from Florida. We played the Tampa Jesuit tournament. Yeah. They had a beautiful field, but they can't hold the candlestick to it. It's not even close. This is a beautiful ballpark to play baseball in. Sun's coming out. Here it comes. So, okay. So tell me what the, what the park means to you and what Steve meant to you and what you think this represents. Well, being having this. I'm sorry. I'm doing very poorly with this. I apologize. Um, this is awfully moving for us. This is a fitting, fitting tribute to a person who really, literally gave his life for the people of this community. Um, I think it's a tribute also to those who are left behind in Steve's legacy that have stepped into the void and are trying to do such good work up here. Citizens, police officers, firefighters, all wanting the, the best for this community. It's what the community deserves. This is Pat Robinson for Steve Shea and the West Seattle Herald. Dot com.